Hello everybody. Today I'll be talking about the advanced static analysis using the IDA Pro Disassembler. And what this will actually do is to help you see what the malware actually do and you can actually analyze it clearer. The, the malware that I'll be doing today will be the DSNX executable file. Now as you can see the file is already opened up in the IDA Pro and if you want to have a grasp of what you'll be looking for, you can actually display the graph of function calls. And it's slightly messy, but it will actually give you an idea of what you'll be looking for because it contains all the subroutines as well as the um, function calls that, it, that the malware will call out for. So this will be the first subroutine that we'll be coming across. So moving on, <clears throat> we'll actually see that the first subroutine calls this first function call get sort name and it has the three parameters name land name and s this variable s actually stores the address of the specific socket that is pointed to um, when the function actually gets called and what this does actually is to describe which buffer the address is stored at so this it will be under a network based indicator of the malware now, as we proceed further into the subroutines, we will actually find a similar function call, but this time it's socket, and it will give you another three parameters, protocol, type, and AF. Now, if you push the value zero into the protocol, what it means is that the parameter, there's no specific protocol, and that the service provider will actually get to choose the protocol to use for this uh, function. And for type 1, it basically means that the socket will be using a socket stream using TCP and also it will be using an IP version 4 family address. So this will actually just further prove um, what the socket and what type of socket they'll be looking for and why it's looking for. And it's clear that it's looking for a socket to use to connect to the internet. So for this IDA Pro, right, you actually have to slowly scroll down through the programming and the coding to actually find what is worthy of taking note of. And so what I've done here, actually, I found another interesting string is the port redirected. And it's basically another network-based indicator. So um, it calls the function, it calls this function here where it basically converts the network address into a string in dotted format. And so what we can infer here is that the malware actually um, redirects a communication request to create services in the host machine. So as I've said earlier, you actually need to slowly scroll through. And here we're at another subroutine where uh, it's very interesting. There are function calls that actually manipulates the registries in the computer. For example, the registry open key, delete value, and close key. So as you can see here, um, the software, the malware is actually trying to create a persistent entry registry where it makes sure that the WinDSNX will run in the background once the computer is booted up, that's why it's trying to manipulate the registries uh, to make sure that and set the value to make sure that uh, it will always run as you can see here. So this is uh, actually a host based indicator. So as you can see here, another string is found. Um, this string actually is with is quite familiar. We've already seen this in the basic static analysis. And what this does is actually trying to gain connection to the internet. And it basically just verifies to us that the malware is trying to connect to the internet and we're not sure what it's going to do yet, so we have to look further more. So as you can see here, another function call is actually being made and it's to a shell execute. And what it does is that it's basically trying to access the directory in the computer to open or print a specific file. And it also has the ability to download and open files from the internet. So it's basically saying that the malware 
uh, has found manipulation in opening and downloading the files from anywhere and executing it accordingly. So it's basically uh, editing the system, it's ha uh, causing system changes as well in, inside the computer. And so this would be considered as a host space indicator. So for this create file function here, um, we, what, we, what we would know is that it's trying to create a file or an I.O. device. So we actually would need to scroll down even further to see what else is it, it's trying to do. Uh. Now, um, as seen before, right, that there's a create file. It's also possible that maybe the malware is trying to create another file of itself and putting it into the directory that is inside the computer. And then we can see another function called delete file, which is also basically trying to delete a file that is based on the given name. So what we can actually infer is that the malware um, would be creating duplicates of itself and deleting the previous old ones. And it's basically trying to run with different extensions and under different, uh, under different folders so that we won't be able to track it. So as we, um, this location of the subroutine is also quite interesting. It's a uh, sending, um, and as you can see here, uh, it's a direct client to client send request. So what? this request actually does is that it will allow the users to send files to each other and also possibly cause a buffer overflow if the file names are more than 14 characters and it calls this function host to network long which will help actually reveal to us um, what are the port numbers that the request is being sent to. Okay, so now we come across this function call called nexthook.ex and we all know that this is basically a Windows API function call to of a keylogger. So this is basically the first signs of a keylogger where it will pass the hook information to the hook procedure. And if we scroll down even more, we can get the another function call, get keyboard state, which actually copies the status of the 256 virtual keys to the specified buffer. And then we can scroll even further to find that um, there's another function called set windows hook exa. And this basically means that the malware would intercept the key press notifications and it will, and it's basically installed so that it can intercept the messages transmitted. As you can see here, the get message and pick message A will actually allow the malware to retrieve the messages from the thread queue where the set major where the set messages are forwarded. So basically we can infer that this malware will intercept the events such as remote key press events because it has the functionalities of a keylogger. Now finally the last thing that I would want to bring up would be this DSNX port scanner where so it, it basically would tell us that the malware is trying to find an open port that can access to the internet hence it is flexible in a sense that it can communicate from an open port and it is not necessarily tied down to just one port for communication so basically we can say that uh, it's trying to find an open port to access the internet to download the files and to manipulate the file systems to delete or create files of itself and it also uh, manipulates the registries in the computer and that's all that uh, we have found inside the IDA Pro. Thank you.